Hello everybody, welcome back. So today we have another episode of uh, my most loved perfumes or fragrances and we've had some fantastic guests so far and we have another fantastic guest who may be new to a lot of viewers I know out there and uh, her name is Victoria and she's from the fantastic new YouTube review channel Flo Salentia, The Art of Nose. We'll put a link to the channel in the description of the video and she's also got a quite a good U uh, Instagram page too which I will also link. So welcome Victoria. Hello, Dan. Thank you very much. I'm very pleased uh, that you invited me and it's an honor for me. Hello, everybody. The honor is all ours. It's absolutely great to have you on the channel. So I'm really excited. The uh, aim of the game then with this video is that you're going to tell us about your five most loved or most cherished fragrances, the ones that mean the most to you and a little bit about why. So always uh, interesting to see what people come up with. Also, though, before we do that, we always try and find out a little bit more about you. So just uh, the, the main thing first then on about your channel, uh, you've just been going recently, you've just started, although you did have some videos up a while back that are no longer visible, but the recent renewal of your channel has just been going a few months, is that right? Yes, yes, uh, I started it at uh, the end of the last year. Okay, so it's a, it's a pretty new channel for you guys, and you are in Moscow, in Russia, yes? Yes, I am. Fantastic. And how is the situation over there? Of course, we're shooting in the middle of a, the slightly difficult pandemic situation, but what's life like over in Moscow at the moment? Well, government says it's getting better. Uh, there are less uh, deaths of uh, this disease. Mm -hmm. um, but we are still forced to wear masks everywhere and gloves, but it, it's better. We don't have uh, as severe lockdown as you have. That's encouraging. That's really good to hear. Let's hope that continues and life can get back to normal very soon. Uh, so you've also got an Instagram page, which has been going uh, rather longer for a couple of years. And there's some yeah. really great pictures on there. And uh, would it be, um, of course, we're going to find out what kind of fragrances you really like. But is it fair to say that your main passion is, is some of the smaller niche houses? Yes, I like to dig in um, a little bit deeper than others and I like to find uh, very small, very niche houses. Um, but on the other hand, I also um, love different um, famous um, perfumery houses. Uh, I like to introduce new brands to uh, people. Right, so my question that I ask everybody who comes on the, the program is at what point did you become more than usually interested in fragrances or perhaps you always have been? How did you get into this hobby? Um, I think that um, most of the hobbies I got, uh, they uh, came from childhood. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was about... Um, six or seven years old when I was gifted my first perfume and I got interest um, in perfumery and in smells in general from that time. So it was Wow, okay. Right, okay. So you've, you've really, ever since you were old enough to have any interest in, in this kind of stuff, you've been a little bit of a, a, a fraghead person. Um, yes, <laughs> yes. All right, fantastic. Um, and over in, in Russia, in, in Moscow, what's the fragrance sort of buying scene like? Uh, it's, you know, you, I always think of Russia a little bit of a different country to Western Europe. You, but obviously, you have department stores and things. But I mean, is, is there a lot of perfume out there, a lot of niche stores you can visit? How does that work in, in Russia where you are? Well, there are a lot of boutiques. Um, for some reason, I know I know the reason why Russian people love perfumery so much. Uh, it's uh, I think it's the lack of um, um, impressions and emotions. Uh, so that's why they are trying to find it somewhere else. And perfumery is the key. So there are a lot of niche boutiques and uh, different big department stores where you can go and you can test something rare and um, besides that there are a lot of um, communities that are pretty large and uh, um, with uh, 
perfumery enthusiasts who sh always share uh, their perfumes. So uh, in these terms, uh, Russia is pretty um, not overwhelmed, but uh, there is enough to smell in Russia and in yes. Moscow especially. I, of course, yeah, yeah. And of course, I mean, even with some of the big niche brands like Gazerzhov and people like that, we know there are sometimes Russian exclusives that you can only get in Russia and stuff. So, yeah, it sounds like there's a really interesting scene. I hope I can visit one day and check it out. So let's get stuck into the subject for the video then, Victoria. So you're going to tell us about your five most loved or most cherished fragrances. No particular rules. So I have no idea how this is going to go, what you're going to select. So what's your first selection for us, please? So when you told me to pick the fragrances with the most uh, emotional importance, uh, I have uh, a small collection of perfumes by the standards of uh, a perfume collector or perfume enthusiast. But I had to think of the most important for me. And as I told, I was about six or seven years old uh, when my mom gave me uh, my first perfume as a gift. It was a miniature of uh, Le Monde Beau, hope you can see it, um, as a birthday present. Uh, it is uh, the fragrance that was released in 1997, if I'm not right. mistaken, by Daniela Andrea, who works uh -huh. for Givadan. Um, and um, that's uh, when and where my interest in perfumery and smells in general began. It looked like this. Uh, but yes. it's not uh, that particular fragrance. It's not. Uh, it's. Um, I bet it's uh, Kinzo by Kinzo. Yeah, it's original Kinzo by Kinzo of uh, uh, 1988. Um, uh -huh. It was in small yellow box, uh, and the bottle itself was wrapped in two tissue papers uh, impregnated with that fragrance, and this old. Um, made a lasting impression on me and many years after i bought it in a full size it's, ah. um, it's without an original um, um stopper because it's a tester but surprisingly uh it didn't change at all since, since that time um yeah. it's just a tiny bit uh, old-fashioned but it still makes me happy le monde es beau es beau by Kenzo. Yeah. Okay, uh, so that means so, the world is beautiful, yes? Yes, yes. Okay, got it. Okay, wonderful. Um, All right. And the one that you've got there, is is that still available? It's a, a, a modern yes. version? Yes, okay, brilliant. and uh, it doesn't uh, cost very much. It, it's. I think that it's cheapy, sort of, but yeah. it's very, um, I don't know, it reminds me of my childhood. There are mm. juicy citruses in it and young green tomato um, tops, sourness of ripe black currant berries and spicy basil. And this all uh, reminds me of a morning in an Italian vegetable garden for some reason. <laughs> and still gives me ple pleasant emotions and memories from my childhood. I use it rarely, uh, mostly in spring, but I still uh, spray it on myself. And uh, this is my childhood. This is the smell of my childhood. Okay, um, fantastic. Yeah, it sounds really nice. I want to try it now. And those child, of course, childhood memories are so important. So that's a great place to start. Um, okay, superb. Number two, then, what's next? Uh, number two. Ah. I apologize. I apologize for this look. It's a Lush, um, Last, Last by Lush. It mm -hmm. was in active usage. Um, it belonged to my grandmother, who uh, unfortunately tragically passed away uh, at the end of the last year. And I miss her and I think about her every day. So when I close my eyes and sniff this fragrance, um, I uh, just pretend her next to me smiling and it gives me very um, warm emotions. It has become a great anchor for me. And that is what perfumery should serve to, I think. And the story behind this fragrance is also quite interesting. Um, it is long, but um, I, I will try to uh, reduce it. Long time ago, I bought this fragrance for myself. Um, 
And when I came to my grandmother, she is a lover of um, lilacs, uh, lilies of the belly, jasmines and perfumery, exclaimed that she certainly needed this particular perfume. And I have a rule, if someone from my family uses a perfume that I use, uh, then I stop using this perfume. And since then, uh, we began to give her um, this uh, perfume as a present every holiday. She loved it very much and she had a, used probably 15 plus bottles of uh, Lust. And funny thing, um, she was blonde and as we all knew, Lush, uh, for some unknown reason, it puts a lot of uh, bright pigment in their perfumes, as you can see. So uh, in such a way that they leave marks um, and stains on your clothes. So uh, when my grandmother sprayed this perfume on herself, uh, her hair was colored bright red. So that was funny. So I don't use it. I think that uh, everyone is, uh, many people is familiar with this uh, fragrance. It's indole jasmine with a great silage and uh, enormous longevity. Have you smelled it? Uh, I don't remember smelling that one, but I, I must have probably tried it because I've tried quite a few of their fragrances. And as you say, they tend to be very strong and very bold and kind of unique smells. They're really kind of different. And uh, as, you, as you say, they're very dark as well. So you have to be careful. Don't spray them on, on your white shirt. Uh, but yeah, that one, I, I'm now going to have to revisit that one. They really do have some, some good stuff, don't they, Lush, actually? Uh, it's, it's a house that in, in the UK, they're certainly best known for their bath products and all that kind of stuff. But some of the fragrances are really rather unique. So uh, I definitely want to try that one again. And that's a great story, I think. Yes, it's if you love Jasmine, uh, you should definitely try Last by Lush. I, I do um, like it. I, I really enjoy Jasmine notes and fragrances myself. Yeah. This one is um, pretty nice, a pretty one. Uh, so um, the third one, Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, uh, as I live in Russia, I follow the development of Russian indie brands, um, indie perfumery very carefully. And you can find many uh, reviews on Russian uh, indie brands on my blog, on Instagram. So uh, here is my favorite uh, Russian perfumer, uh, Valery Sokolov, um, and his Le Renoir brand. So I'll um, just get that straight. The, the brand is called? Le, Le Renoir. We can say that this fragrance, um, this perfume was made by my order or at my request and uh, into the permanent collection of this brand. Wow. Uh, I also came up with a name um, for this fragrance named Erotique. Can you see it? Yes. It's a play on words. Um, uh, okay, yeah. Iris is my favorite note in perfumery, and I find it quite erotic uh, component in um, perfumery. And I also um, love this uh, flower. And I combined these two words in one, and Iris and erotica. And this is what we got, erotic. Uh, this is a viscous gourmand creamy iris or even buttery iris root uh, with soily and animalic uh, nuances of cocoa butter. Uh, and I would say it is an edible iris uh, mm -hmm. with an invigorating aromatic um, cardamom opening. So uh, this brand can be found on Fragrantica and Le Renoir uh, ships abroad with no problems. Uh, he has very interesting collection and he also has samples uh, that he also ships abroad and they are relatively not expensive for niche um, brands so uh, it's not not a problem to try uh, his perfumes uh, to order them and maybe compare um, uh, our perceptions of this uh, perfume so this is uh, this one is special for me so you actually were involved in the creation of this fragrance, is that right? Yes, uh, that is right. Uh, I think that uh, the perfumer was uh, in search of new ideas and he decided to collaborate with me. Uh, and this was 
<clears throat> a pretty successful collaboration. Uh, so um, it wasn't a bespoke fragrance, uh, but uh, still I consider it as um, as a bespoke one. But it is in his um, permanent collection. You can buy it, you can test it. Okay, that sounds really good. I personally also love iris notes. Uh, famously in, in men's fragrances, of course, we have Dior Homme and some of the flankers of that. They were the first ones that introduced that note to me. And there are so many beautiful examples. I, I also really like Iris Ganache from um, Guerlain, I think, yes. which is a beautiful kind of gourmand Iris concoction. So that one really appeals to me. Thank you. It's a great to discover a new brand there. That was number three. Now we'll go on to number four. Number four, um, my favorite note besides Iris uh, is vetiver and i also don't mind uh, wearing male perfumes um to be more precise i try not to divide them into male and female uh, that's how i came across this brand uh, this is an italian brand luigi borelli uh, originally uh, it is an italian um, clothing brand but in 2016 they launched their perfumery collection and this one is called the Cunha Wool uh, and uh, um, all the fragrances of their collection is dedicated to different uh, uh, textile materials mm -hmm. so uh, this is the best vetiver fragrance for me so far though I also like Encre Noir by Lalique and I like the grapefruity vetiver of Terre d'Hermé, de, de, Terre d'Hermé, how do you pronounce it? Um, <laughs> the Cuny wool is uh, an intense, oily, almost phenolic scent of um, leather, citruses, vetiver, spices, and hot woody resins. Um, there are even some club and carrot facets in it um, at the opening. So uh, this fragrance is um, uh, one of the best um, vetiver fragrances for me and it represents the best root crops of everything that doesn't bloom and that is growing on the ground. Mm -hmm. so it has um, earthy nuances um, uh, and smoky balsamic facets so uh, it's super long lasting super um, it has a super projection so um, and I discovered for myself that um, men's perfume somehow gives me they give me confidence so when I wear this perfume I'm ready to do a very serious business <laughs> So this is um, my gem of my collection. Okay, I really like the look and the sound of that one. I've actually not tried anything from that brand. The presentation of the bottle looks really nice. It sounds really like a, a great, I love some of the classic vetiver fragrances. So I'm really keen to try that one out. So I'm, I'm discovering a few new brands today. And so that, that one you would say would be more typically thought of as a male fragrance, but yes. you're happy to, to, yeah. All right, that sounds really, really good. I'm gonna check those guys out. Uh, superb, so already we've had four fragrances. What is your fifth selection, please? Um, are you lucky in lotteries, Dan? No. I don't ever. I I don't play the lottery, and uh, I I no. I don't feel like I normally win prizes. No. Me neither. So this okay. perfume is special for me, not only because uh, this box bears the, the autograph of Patricia de Nicolai herself, mm -hmm. uh, but because I also won it in a lottery. So um, it is called. Uh, Baikal leather, as you can uh -huh. see, uh, Patricia de Nicolai, Nicolai Parfums. Two years uh -huh. ago, in November 2019, there was an absolutely amazing presentation of this um, perfume uh, in official Nicolai boutique in Moscow. I was invited 
and I didn't even expect that, um, but I won the whole uh, bottle of this fragrance that I wanted. Wow. And with an autograph of Patricia de Nicolai um, in a lottery. And um, this fragrance is also about an iris, but it's about um, a cold and transparent um, bitter iris. Um, so um, it has creamy iris, but it's uh, floral woody. And there is an interesting component inside that um, Patricia used uh, instead of prohibited birch tar. Uh, it is uh, an essence of smoked pine, which gives this composition a smoky, leathery uh, vibe. So it's a very interesting and unusual fragrance. And if uh, someone uh, likes Gucci Envy, which is uh, discontinued, unfortunately, Mm -hmm. um, you'd probably like Michael Leather as well. It's also very long lasting and the silage is great. So this one is special for me. Wow, that for sounds really good. When you say that sounds really good, uh, I really think the Nikolai house have some amazing fragrances and they're, they're quite uh, well priced, aren't they as well? When you say Gucci Envy, did you mean the women's yes, version um, then? Yeah. yeah. Just, just to avoid confusion for my viewers, yeah. Okay, that sounds absolutely gorgeous, and I really want to try that one. And lucky you, so you know, it's it's always nice to win a prize like that. And that was a great one, I think. Now, I just there's one other quick question actually that I wanted to ask you. Um, there's a Russian fragrance. It's not not a very high end fragrance, but I keep being tempted to buy it, and it's supposed to be a very classic, inexpensive fragrance. And I think it is called something like. Kruposkaya Moscow, Red Moscow. Um, I think there is one version for men and one for women. Yes, I do have it. Do you think it's? Um, do you think the men's one or the women's one is good? Uh, well, Red Moscow has only one version, and I think that it is unisex. But um, it was oh, right. uh, meant to be for women. It was meant to be for women, but okay. men also wear uh, red Moscow. It's a very old-fashioned vintage, cheaper, uh, uh, floral. It's very floral, and it uh, projects very interesting on men male skin. I must admit there are uh, different concentrations of it. Uh, we have um, uh, perfume, pure perfume, and cologne. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, uh, the toilet, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, right, I think that's where I've become confused because I've seen the cologne version and the perfume, and maybe I saw a review where someone was sort of saying the cologne one is for men, and maybe the perfume would be more for a woman. So maybe it could be worth a try. I I, I could give it yes, a try. I might yes. like it. Okay, I brilliant. Can send you one. No, well, that's too kind. You don't have to do that. But thank you very much. OK, well, that's been absolutely fantastic. I'm so grateful to, to you for joining us all the way from Moscow. It's really great to have my, my first guest from, from Russia. And uh, I hope one day I will see the perfume stores of Moscow. And uh, may, who knows, maybe I'll even run into you at a fabulous fragrance event when, when the world gets back to normal soon. So, Victoria, thank you so much for giving us your time. As thank ever, guys, you. You check out the links to Victoria's channel down below. Thank you so much. Uh, it was a very pleasant speaking to you. Hope that your lockdown will end soon and you can come to Russia and I can make an excursion for uh, you. Uh, that would be absolutely fantastic. Let's hope so. Okay, guys, thanks ever so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Remember, whatever you're doing in life, let's project. Bye-bye. So I find um, this fragrance shockingly good. It's smelling good. Yeah? Yes, it's, it's good. It's fresh. I like yeah. it. I really like the scent. I think it smells super, super sexy and very masculine. It's so smooth. There's a creaminess that's from the vanilla. It's so smooth and classy. It's a smooth golden fragrance with a rolling heart of freshness.